angry mob stormed the U.S. Capitol to try to, to overturn the 2020 election. Capitol Police, outnumbered and overwhelmed, faced a tidal wave of violence, including my next guest, who's become a steadfast voice in the fight for justice and accountability. In his new book, he provides a firsthand account of the trauma he continues to experience. Harry Dunn writes, quote, I'm still struggling, still trying to get back to the man I was. I'm a lot better, but I came to realize that recovering from that day is going to be a long process. He also issues a sober warning, saying, quote, it was a frightening wake-up call that our democracy, this thing we hold so precious, can be taken from us if we don't protect it. Joining me now is the man who wrote those words, friend of the show, Officer Harry Dunn, author of Standing My Ground, a Capitol Police officer's fight for accountability and good trouble after January 6th. Officer Dunn, as always, thank you very much for coming to the show. Uh, House Speaker Johnson, who was one of the 147 Republicans who voted to overturn the election results and who has been dubbed the, the architect of the election denial lawsuits that happened in 2020, um, as referred to both of Donald Trump's impeachments as a sham. Your reaction to the speaker, who's now second in line to the presidency? Good morning, Jonathan. Always a pleasure to be on with you. And uh, yes, definitely a friend of the Saturday show. But uh, with regards to um, the speaker's, um, you know, his comments regarding the impeachments, uh, you know, the American people, I believe, ultimately, not necessarily the speaker or members of Congress, uh, the American people, which who I write the book for. The book is for the American people, not I don't expect members of Congress, elected officials, governors, mayors to read my book, but it's for the American people and the people that hold them responsible. That's why it's so important. Like when I talked about losing democracy, democracy is that of the people. And I believe that if the people are educated, um, they make educated votes and they will do uh, their parts um, to hold elected officials accountable so that the, elect the elected officials are reflective of what the American people are thinking. So my book is for the American people, um, not necessarily elected officials, and uh, we need to exercise our vote. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Donald Trump at a rally on, uh, on Thursday in Houston called the January 6th um, uh, prisoners, quote, hostages. Your reaction to that and how dangerous is it for Trump and others to, to continue to frame those who took part in the insurrection as victims? If, if they're hostages, they're hostages of his lies and of the, the, the MAGA party, uh, the, the rhetoric that he spills, that's what people are, that's what this country is a hostage of. Um, a lot of the things that he said is just completely lies, uh, not based on any fact or anything. And people are taking it and running with it. And like I said, I think that goes back to where we are as a country and how, you know, this next election cycle and where we are now, it's just been, you know, it, we elect, we arrived at this place due to lies, um, you know, stolen election. That's why people were there on January 6th. They thought the election was stolen. Um, <laughs> despite the uh, the evidence um, showing that it wasn't. There was nothing that proved that it was. And so if they're hostages, they're hostages of the, his lies. And I think we just need to get back to um, just honesty and uh, doing what the American people want. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Just yesterday, a former Trump political appointee at the State Department who assaulted a Capitol uh, officer on January 6th was sentenced to 70 months in prison. And another January 6th rioter was sentenced to 85 months in prison for ripping off a gas mask of a, of a Capitol police officer. Is this the type of accountability you were hoping for? You know, that was um, Officer Daniel Hodges and uh, retired uh, Sergeant Gunnell, who um, were the two officers who actually testified or, excuse me, gave um, victim impact statements for those sentencing hearings. And yes, that is that is what accountability looks like um, and justice. I, I can't speak for those two individuals who were specifically, um, you know, affected by those two men's actions. But also those two men created, uh, committed crimes against this country. And like I said in my book, and I talk about how 
the attack, January 6th just wasn't an attack on the individuals and the police officers who uh, bared the brunt of that violence, but it was also on the American people in this country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it is important that uh, these, these sentences reflect the severity of the crimes that they committed. So, like I said, I'm glad that I'm not in the Justice Department or, you know, a judge that has to make those decisions to determine what is acceptable. But, um, you know, it, it, it seems fair. But um, I'm not one to celebrate somebody being locked up. You know, it's it's sad, but it's, you know, it's it's what he, he got what he deserved. Mm -hmm. I'm going to squeeze in two questions. We got <laughs> less than two minutes. In your book, right, you, point you. Out, <laughs> you, you point out that uh, point out that directly after January 6th, the media largely ignored the racial component to what happened on that day. Do you still feel that way? You know, uh, when I talked about it, like it's, it's the, the black police officers there and black people in this country in general just have a different walk that we uh, that we have to mm -hmm. navigate this life through. So it exists. Um, I don't think that January 6th was about race, but there were racist people there. It's just plain and simple. So, you know, like I said, I don't think the January 6th insurrection was about, you know, a racial overthrowing of the government or whatever. But we can't deny the fact that that racial component still exists in this country. Yeah, there were racist people there, one carrying a Confederate flag inside yeah. the U.S. Capitol. Last question, Officer Dunn. You recently posted on, on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, <laughs> that at the moment you haven't given much formal thought to running for public office, but that you're not opposed to it. So could we expect a run from you in the future? You know, I... I I do believe in public service. And, you know, what, like I said in my statement, what a better way to serve your country or to serve the, than to serve your communities that you live in. And, you know, yes, it's something that I would consider, but it is a hell of an undertaking. And um, I would talk with my loved ones, uh, people that I, whose opinions that I trust and respect. Um, and I'll make some kind of decision, but I'm definitely not against that at all. I love the idea of <clears throat> serving your country. And even if I continue to do it in the capacity that I'm in now, so. Well, uh, Officer Harry Dunn, whatever you do, whether it's in uniform or as a, as a member of Congress or as an elected official at any at any level, um, you will be a hero doing it. Officer Harry Thanks, Dunn, Jonathan. thank you, thank you very much for coming back to the show.